to talk about Jesus being our light this month. We're talking about the pictures of Jesus. And so uh, in John, the book of John, John writes about 14 different times, he says, I am something. And uh, one, he says, I'm the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I'm, I am that I am. He was in the beginning before Abraham was. He was. So when the, when the world was formed and the, the the sun and the moon were formed, and the little animals and all the people were formed. Jesus was there in the beginning, right? And then um, we see that he's the door. Um, he opens the door up to us, a way to Father God. Um, he's the good shepherd we talked about last week. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. That means he's the only God that ever rose from the dead. He, what, his, what was prophesied about him was true, and he, in him is all life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life significant, and we won't talk about that today, but anyway, and he says, I'm also the vine. Um, he says, if we attach ourselves to the vine, then we'll have life. If we don't attach ourselves to the vine, we'll wind up dead. That's true, right? So we have to stay attached to Jesus, so he'll give us life, eternal life, amen? And life right now, joyful life. Even if a car hits us, we'll be able to rejoice in Thailand, or uh, Taiwan, uh, that uh, God's protection is everywhere, amen? <laughs> no matter what you go through in life, God will be there for you. Uh, I love that. So, my title of sermon, it says, Jesus is a light of the world, but also a subtitle of that was, Jesus exposes our dark, our, the dark side. Jesus is light, and light does one thing, and we see through the word of God here in a little bit, that it exposes darkness. Amen. From us as individuals, but also the religious people. We'll see that in a second here. But let's go and, and turn to John chapter 8. And let's read that together. Or I'll just read it to you. In verse 12, it says, um, when Jesus spoke, this was a... Uh, after, I'll share this a little bit, he was uh, being questioned by Jewish leaders, and then he spoke after uh, uh, they had brought somebody to accuse, but then he says this, when Jesus spoke again, he said to the people, uh, I am the light of the world, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but we will have the light of life. Let's pray. Father, we, uh, I thank you uh, again for an opportunity to uh, minister your word and be able to challenge and bring understanding to who you really are. And I just humble myself this morning before you and ask you to bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. So Jesus here, after explaining to the religious folks who he was, they questioned him, and then here he tells them that I am light, and I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have light of life. Jesus is the light of the world. So I, I went back to examine this a little bit and I said, go back to when the light was first came into the world. God spoke light into existence and we have light and he said we have darkness and the first day was happened, right? So we have light and darkness. So we see Jesus, we see, if you study out a little bit, you find out God himself, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit created the world. And they created light and darkness. Jesus, and we see, fast forward to, to, to the New Testament, we see that Jesus said he, he was a light. And as he was arguing, and as the, he had did miracles at this point, he had seen, we seen blind people, eyes open, we seen crippled people walk, and the Pharisees began to question what Jesus, who Jesus was. And Jesus simply said, as I am, and they're like, what? I am? I am. I've always been, I'm the answer to everything, I am. And he says, I am light. And he began to expose to the religious people at that time who they really were and what their motives were. And he brought light to their life. He, he began to show them what the real purpose of their, their, their religious was, religion was. And also we see in John chapter 3 how Jesus told Nicodemus exactly uh, what people liked more than light. So let's turn to John chapter 3 for a second. John describes this... Um, uh, beautifully, in, uh, as he records the uh, Nicodemus' story, um, and at the end of this, it shares, it shows that what people rather like darkness than light. But Jesus became light to the world. So he exposes 
true to everyone. In John chapter 3, it says, um, we can start with verse 10. Uh, let's, let's just go down to, um, well, this is uh, verse 9. It says, how can this, be? okay, uh, verse 5, I'm sorry, Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of water and of spirit. Flesh brings uh, life to flesh, but spirit, um, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised when I'm saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it's coming from or, uh, from or where it's going. So it is with the spirit. So Nicodemus asked me, how can this be? Nicodemus was a, uh, a religious leader. He came to Jesus in the evening time when nobody else was around and started asking these questions. And he said, yes, uh, uh, yes, uh, you are a teacher, said, uh, you are a teacher, said Jesus, and you, uh, you do not understand these things. I tell you the truth, the, um, I tell you the truth, we speak of what we know, and we testify of what we have seen, but still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How will you believe if I speak to you of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who's come from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses was lifted up in, uh, in um, up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Jesus was referring to his death here. He said, I was going to be lifted up. I'm going to die. I have to do this so you can be, um, you can um, believe. And everyone who believes uh, in him will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This is uh, the famous verse you see. Sometimes people put this big sign up at football games in the end zone, so the cameras will get it. John 3.16, everybody knows this verse, right? If I was trying to teach people the other verse, verse 17, it's probably just as important to me, I think, as, as the rest of John 3.16. It says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Read that again. But Christ came into the world not to condemn them. How many know, how many believe that, I mean, how many had a thought of God, how he's just condemning all the time? We're always, you know, pointing fingers at it. You're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong, you're doing this wrong, right? And we have this view of God that's just really not right. If God's a loving, he's a caring father, he wants you to be saved. And Jesus <coughs> was that light to the world. And he says, for God did not send his, world, his son into the world to, to uh condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. So that means that everybody with who believes in Jesus would be saved. Saved from what? What are we saved from? We're set, set, the penalty of our sin, right? And we'll talk about that here in a minute, a little bit more. But we have this penalty, we have sin, we have to be saved from that. Jesus was going to come and be the final sacrifice, a new covenant that our sins would be totally forgiven. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but Whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. So what do we have to believe in to be saved? We have to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Right? That's how we're saved. That's how we, we are, are not, um, um, we're not condemned in our sins if we believe that Jesus can forgive us our sins and then our sins are forgiven because of what he did for us on the cross. This is the verdict. Now, this is light. Now, look at this next part. That's where I'm going to get to in verse 19. It says, this is the verdict then. This is at the conclusion. Light has come into the world. Light. Who's the light again? Jesus. Jesus. Light has come into the world. And, the, and it says here, um, but man loved darkness instead of what light? Because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates light <coughs> and will not come into the light for fear his deeds will be exposed. What does Jesus do? He comes to bring light to every situation. Amen? So at first he came to the religious folks, the Jews, and shared with them, like, your motives are wrong. You're, you're, you, you are keeping the law, but you're not really understanding the love of it and what I have and why I wanted to redeem my people. And, and I was like, you're missing a point. You could have come up with all these rules of why you should be in the temple. You come up with modern church has done the same thing. We come up with all these rules of why we should be in church and why we should do what we do. And we kind of miss the fact that God loves us and cares for us and he's redeeming us from our, our, our bad and evil deeds. 
and he wants to redeem us. So Jesus is the light. He has come into the world. But man loved darkness instead of light because their deeds are evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come unto the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. So man, look how many... Um, and I was up late last night. I was, um, I was up late to about 1, 30, 2 o'clock last night. And um, so sometimes I'll watch like Sports Center after going through this, and then I'll watch the, maybe they'll have like the, the ending of the Bucks game last night. Anybody watch the Bucks game yesterday? They beat uh, Golden State. You know, they have 24 and 0 record. Now, now today they have 24 and 1 record. <laughs> so, yeah, I was, so I was watching the end of the Bucks game. Well, I was just telling you what I did last night. So, um, anyway, uh, we don't know if the Bucks will win any more games after that, but they won last night. Um, and then I was just uh, channel surfing. I have like 10,000 channels on my TV. I don't know how many I have. But, you know, we have like cable TV, so we have all these stations. And so I was watching, I was going through the stations uh, one by one, like going up the, 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 the thing. And so they have all these different move shows I had never even heard of before because I don't watch that stuff. And uh, so one was called Mary. Did anybody watch Mary? Don't raise your hand. Uh, Mary, it's called Mary. And uh, it's just nasty. It's all about sex. It's all about other people sleeping with other people. And it was just, I watched about three minutes of it. I said, okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> then I went to the next show and it was the same thing and the next you know just up the tier of the stations i don't know why it happened we're we, tina and i decided in january we're getting our cable uh we don't need to watch that stuff but i want to watch what i i want on my tv what i want to watch or pay for or whatever uh but it's just it's just one after another thing and when did actual regular tv shows become so nasty i mean they were like blatantly talking about going to bed together and doing stuff. I mean, this was on a regular TV. I don't know if it's regular TV, it's just, I got on my station, so I think, wow, they, people rather watch that and they like darkness better than light. How about even as a believer, sometimes we struggle with going, staying in the light and in darkness. Does anybody have that problem at all? Right? We struggle with, I know I'm supposed to do the right thing and this is bad, but I'm gonna sit and watch the rest of this show anyway whatever, right? Not saying all TV is bad or whatever, but I'm just thinking this was bad, so that wasn't something I'd want my grandkids to watch, or I always tell, if you don't want your children watching it, then you should watch it, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of thing, so that's my little um, thing, but not only that, I mean, even bigger than that, Jesus is the light, he's going to expose to you if this is right or wrong, <coughs> right? So Jesus is this light, and he's going to reveal to us, but man likes darkness rather than light. Why? Because we're in our, in our nature, our sinful nature, before Jesus, we are selfish. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm talking to you. Uh, we're, we like doing things our own way, right? Ladies are just compliant and they love Jesus, so that's, your guys are good. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta keep it safe for myself. But anyway, you know, we just, we ha we are selfish by nature, and then we're like, um, we're prideful. So once we get into that, we went, well, I can handle it. I can deal with this myself. I can, I can handle my situation. And you know, really, we can't. We need Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. I want to share with you just Jesus, how, how awesome this light is. I want you to turn to the book of Revelation. Remember last week I said everybody should read a proverb every day, right? I got a text message, hey, Pastor, thanks for telling me that because I really enjoy reading Proverbs. I think that thing is awesome, right? And, um, but I want, I want to challenge you this week or in the next, over the next few weeks is read the book of Revelation too. Because when you get to the last couple chapters, it's like so amazing. Revelation chapter 21, and when I start reading here, I just want to read the whole thing to you, but I won't do that. If you go to Revelation 21, verse 23, or verse 22, and then 23, it says, Now this is, uh, this is John described, an angel took John, and this angel was showing uh, John all these beautiful, wonderful things. He showed Jesus on a white horse. He showed the church's candlesticks, and he showed the, the battle that's going to happen at the end. And then towards the end, he shows the new, the new Jerusalem, the new heaven, and the new earth going to happen at the end. There's going to be a new Jerusalem, and he describes how big it is. It's 144 
cube is long, and I can figure that out in feet. I don't remember what that was, but I remember the walls are 200 feet thick. I looked that up. So it's 200 feet thick, these walls are, and it's made up of all these special jewels. And on the bottom of the foundations are the apostles, and this beautiful thing. And then it says, in the center, there's not a temple. But in the center is God, the Father, and Jesus. And look at verse 20, 22. It says, I did not see the temple <laughs> in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb, who's the Lamb? Jesus. Jesus, are in the temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Say that with me. The Lamb is the Lamb. Hallelujah. And he says, Thy word, and we know uh, from other studies that Jesus is the word. He says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Jesus is the lamp. And he says, Thy word is the lamp. So Jesus is the light. And he brings us to all truth. Amen. And I think it's going to be amazing to see that. Because I'm going to be there. It says, Those, um, then it goes on further to say that those um, whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life are going to be in that city. Hallelujah. How do you get your names written in the Lamb's Book of Life? You become a follower of Jesus. Amen. And you deny yourself. You take up your cross. You begin to follow Jesus. You say, yes, Jesus, you are the one. I ask Jesus to forgive me of my sins. He cleanses me from all my unrighteousness. And my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So you, those that names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life will see this. How would you like to see that? What's that going to look like? Holy, holy, holy. There's angels that stand before the throne of God crying out, holy. I, I don't know what that's going to be like, but that's going to be really cool. It says there's an angel in heaven that their whole body has eyes on it and cries out, holy, holy. In their wings, in their body, it's like this vision. I think that's cool. I don't, God is very creative. And if you can make an angel that has a lot of eyes on it and cries holy and worship him, then I think that's really cool. And I just think that when I see that, I'm going to be down, bowing my face to the ground and worshiping Him because He saved me from my sins. Amen? Jesus is alive. He's going to call, he calls, even in heaven, He's going to be, or even when the new heaven new earth is made, He's going to be the light that shines uh, day and night. And we're not going to need the sun or the moon. That's how bright God's love is. Isn't that great? And when He comes back, it says the, the heavens, uh, everybody will see Him. It's going to be an amazing, amazing time. But Jesus is the light. That is the point. He was the light in the beginning. He was the light when he came, and he's born in the uh, uh, manger. He is a, he walked in light and truth, and he's going to be the light in the future. Amen. That's Jesus. He's the light. Now, what is our responsibility? What do we we we, we need to walk in this light? I'm going to share with you about three or four scripture verses or passages that will hopefully encourage you and me. To continue to walk in his life. Amen. It's very, uh, Paul writes it, John writes it. It, it, it tells us that how we are natural children of darkness. We came out of that darkness because we said yes to Jesus. And when we said yes to him, we begin to walk in a different way. Amen. We begin to walk differently. We begin to see things differently. We begin to see truth over uh, darkness. It was his will over our will. It was his way of doing things instead of our way of doing things. Things in our life changed. Can you say amen? Did it change for you? It changed for me. Amen. And everything like life looked different. Life looked different. Um, I tell the story when I was when I became a believer. Um, I was in jail. I told you, most of you that already. And then when I came out and I walked outside for the very first time, the grass even looked greener. Amen. I saw things differently. The trees looked different. I was in North Carolina. The sky was bluer than the normal sky was blue, and to my to my eyes anyway. I began to see the birds sang more beautifully than they ever sang before. Uh, just was a, a different. Uh, uh, something happened. Something changed. I began to walk after him and seek after him. So I want to share with you uh, a couple different verses, uh, passages. Let's go to First uh, John. Chapter 5. So John, written by the same person that wrote the Gospel of John, you have 1 John. So look at, uh, if you go past Hebrews and uh, James right there, then you have Peter, and then you see John. 1 John chapter um, 5, I mean, sorry, chapter 1. And this talks about walking in the light. Now, with God, there's some conditions, right? If I ask him to forgive me, I have to believe that he forgave me, right? 
And so here's some, uh, in this passage, if you have your Bibles, I have written, circled in here about six different ifs. If you do this, this will happen kind of thing. All right, so verse 5 says this. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. Let me say it again. If we walk in darkness, and we, or we, walk in, we say we're walking in light, but we're walking in darkness, truth is, not, truth is not in us. So what does that mean? What does that mean that I'm walking in light, I'm a believer of Jesus, I'm going to follow Jesus, I know Jesus has the uh, eternal life, but I begin to uh, walk in darkness. So darkness always represents what? Sin. Sin. So what is sin? What is the things that we're not supposed to do? We can get into that. You can look that up yourself. There's a lot of things we're not supposed to do. Amen? Watching sex on TV is probably one of the things we should be doing. Right? I'm just putting that out there. Um, and, 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 and another thing, drunkenness is another thing that, is, that the Word of God says. If you're drunk, right? You shouldn't be doing those things. So you can't be a believer and do those things. So you're walking in darkness. How, do you have help to get out of that? Yes. Do we struggle in our relationship with God? Can I stand up here and go, everything's perfect once you become a believer? I would be lying to you. Do we go through uh, uh, struggles and do we go through disbelief? Do we go through uh, times of, uh, uh, that our faith is, we're not sure where we're supposed to be doing? Yes. Do we dabble sometimes in things we're not supposed to? Yes. Does God still love you? Yes. We can overcome those, and we should overcome those, because the consequences of our sin is, 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 is significant. Look at verse, uh, uh, the next verse. Says, if we claim to have fellowship with him, and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live in the truth. But if we walk in the light, he is in, uh, he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. So can you, forgive, can you be forgiven of all the things you did wrong in your past? Yeah. So <coughs> you cannot, um, like I was thinking, I read Diana's post, and she said the enemy immediately came to her like she should go to church and she should go back home, right? She wrote that in her, her Facebook post. And the enemy will come attack you immediately, like, you're not good enough. Look at what you did in your past. And you have to believe that when you ask God to forgive you, that you're forgiven. Amen? God, through, his, through Jesus, exposes the sinful nature in ourselves. He'll illuminate it in you, and you have to have, you may have to make a decision. Yes, I believe that Jesus Christ forgave me of my sins. And then he says this also. He purifies us from all sins. So it means we're, we're forgiven as we first believe, and then as we walk through this thing, he'll take us through it and purify us and to make us holy like he is holy. How many holy people we have out here? Come on. We can be holy because He is holy. That's what His Word says. So we have to, we can walk in that, but if we follow after Him, right? That's what the key is. If we're continually following after Him, then we can have our sins forgiven. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So we're in a struggle. That's what Jesus is saying. He knows us. He knows what nature we're in. We will once... We'll, 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 in the future, we'll have a new, a new body, and we'll be with Him forever. We'll have, the sin nature will be gone forever. We won't struggle against that. We'll be with Him in the new Jerusalem. It'll be an amazing time. We won't, we won't have the desire of sin any longer in us. It won't be our appetite. It won't be part of us. We'll be tempted that way. Anyway, the Word tells us when you are tempted, guess what? He provides for you. He provides a way to escape. When you're tempted, there's a way to escape, it says. And it, in that is through Jesus. How do I escape my temptations? How do I escape depression? How do I escape sin? How do I escape these things? Because it's through Jesus. That's why you have to stay close to Him. He will expose all those things for you. If we claim to have not have sin, um, we make him out to be a liar, and the word of God has no place in our hearts. So we're always struggling, we're always working, and it says then, verse 2, chapter 2, says, my dear children, I write this to you that you will not sin. He's telling us this, he's telling us that he's writing these things in the word of God, John's writing this, so we don't sin, that we're not tempted, that we have, we know that the light is with us, and he's guiding us, and he's leading us to all truth, amen? Let's look at another chapter in First Thessalonians. 
uh, chapter 5. That's, uh, if you find Timothy, it's right before Timothy. It's on page 810, 886 in my Bible. Mine You're too? All right. All right, Timothy. Does everybody have that? Did you find it? Sure, yes. Okay. What? Hey, Lisa, why don't you come over and sit by Jason? He'll help you find that in your Bible for you. Oh, you got that? Right. There you go. There you go. Where is Jason? Right there, Jason. <coughs> it's important to me that you look at and read this in the Word because the Word is going to change you. And uh, after today, you go home and maybe you'll read that. Matter of fact, in the back of your bulletin, there's a place for notes. You can write these scriptures, verses down and look those up again later. So if you want to do that, everybody got a bulletin? You can write notes if you need to. Okay, good. So uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.5, 5, it, it says, um, or verse 4, we'll start with that. But you brothers are not in darkness, say amen, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons and light and sons of the day. We're sons of light, we're sons of Jesus, we're sons of God. Amen. We're, we're, we're we are we are believers. You are the all sons of light and sons of day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. This is a responsibility now. Say, well, how do I continue to walk in light? How do I continue to walk in uh, in in Jesus? Is it, and we have to have some self-control. So when I'm going through this stations last night. I could sat and watch the rest of the end of the movie, but the Holy Spirit self-control says, no, I don't need to watch that, right? You can turn it off, right? It says, um, let, um, I'm sorry, uh, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-control. For those who sleep, sleep at night, but those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But, but since we belong to the day, let us be self-control, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation like a helmet. We can see in Ephesians, it talks about the, the, the armor of God. And we see this uh, uh, John, uh, or Paul writing here again, referring to the breastplate of love, putting on love and putting on faith. How many, how many of you, I believe, I had faith, it took faith to believe that Jesus was some God. It took faith to believe that he's the light of the world. It took faith to say, yes, God, you can forgive my sins. And it says, now here we have to put on faith. So can we lose our faith? Or can some of the faith kind of leak out a little bit? I mean, I believe God is still the Son of God, but sometimes my faith is not where it was, where it was before. Right? I can remember the time when I really believed, and I really served, and I really loved, and I really worshipped, and all that stuff was wonderful. But then now I got to a point where it's like, it's really a struggle right now. I mean, been through that besides myself, right? We go through times of testing. We give time, we even get times of, uh, that our Father disciplines us. We go through times that God is taking us through a journey where he can, our faith is increased. No matter what life throws at us, I'm going to hang on to Jesus. It doesn't matter because I know he has the, the, the gift of eternal life. I'm going to hang on to him. So our faith is increased when we go through trials and tribulations. How many want to go through trials and tribulations? Not so many, right? It's not. I, don't, I just want to have the happy Jesus time. I want to be joy and full of glory. I want to dance around the sanctuary. I love that kind of stuff. Amen? And But reality says we're going to go through some, some trials and tribulations because the enemy of our soul hates that you love Jesus. So he's going to throw things at us, right? But we have to hang on to truth. We have to hang on to light. And light will expose the falsities of this world. Light will expose the hidden secret sins of our hearts. So light will expose the enemy's devices against us. Light will expose what we're battling in our minds and our heart. Amen? Light does that to us. We should take a big flashlight and just shine it in our hearts. Like, okay, God, whatever's in <coughs> out of you, just take it out right now. Amen? I want that out of me so I can continue to believe and have faith to, to do what you want us to do. 
And it says here, you, uh, you are all sons of light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or darkness. So then let us not be like others who fall asleep, but let us be alert and self-control, so that those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, drunk at night. But since we all belong to the day, let us self-control, putting on faith like a breastplate and, and hope of salvation like a helmet. This, this is kind of interesting because Paul was in prison when he wrote most of the, his books. And so he was tied up between usually two Roman guards. So he was kind of describing their uniform, if you will. And they had these helmets on. He described the helmet protected the head in battle, right? And so we should put on salvation as a helmet, knowing our hope is in our salvation in Jesus, amen? Not, never wait, protect your mind with Jesus, amen? Protect your, your head, if you will, your thinking, everything with Jesus. If you don't, then what happens? You take your helmet off, the enemy can come and knock you in the head, and you're going to get, you know, you're going to have problems, right? So that's what, and that's reality. Salvation as a helmet, put it, remember the salvation. Remember what Jesus did for you. Don't forget. That's why we had communion last week, so we don't forget what Jesus did. His blood cleanses us, amen. His body that was broken for us was as far as healing, all right. And then, then communion also has another aspect of that. It also re reminds us that he's coming back for us, amen. And we should encourage each other. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, I love this last part of Paul writes this in verse 11. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as fact as you are doing. We build each other up and we encourage each other because we believe in the light. We believe in Jesus. We believe that he exposes the darkness. We have these battles. How do you practically deal with, um, how do you, I, 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 was, I was struggling with this this week a little bit. How, what do I, what's the steps do I take to go from struggling with God and to, to believing Him? What, 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 what's that battle that we fight? I'm struggling with right now with my relationship with God, and now I want to, I know I should be here, but I'm not here. I know I should be with Him, I know I should walk with Him, I know I should walk with light, I know I should be uh, happy, joyful, fruits of the Spirit, I should have all that in me, right? Um, happy dance all the time, right? Uh, but I'm not. Anybody here? I'm not. I'm, I want to be here, but I'm not. What's the steps to going back to here? What's the steps? I give you three steps to go. Take these three steps and you can be here. Or maybe four steps. Maybe it's five steps. I didn't write them down. I'm saying, what is the thing? But I'm here. I've been here, so I know what I'm talking about. And I want to be here. What do I have to do as a believer? Read the Bible. Read the Bible is a good one. Yeah, I mean, that's good. Cindy. Admit it to yourself. Admit it to yourself. Admit it that. So what you're saying, I love that. You're so awesome. <laughs> so what you're saying is, I need to repent of the way I'm thinking. I need to go back over here. Right? That's what you're saying, Cindy. I'm, gonna, I'm thinking this way. I've got some... Um, not so good thinking in my mind about whatever situation that you're going through. You're not sure what it is, but you know, whatever you're going through, I'm over here, but I need to be here. So when I'm here, I need to ask the Lord to forgive me. That's what I was going to say first. Repent. Change your thinking. And that's what it is. Thinking and repentance is just changing your mind. I'm thinking this way, but now I'm going to think. We say, I'm walking this way. This is what I used to say. I'm walking this way, and I need to walk this way. So I'm looking at what Andy told me this one time. It's called a behavior change. I'm going to stop my behavior change, and I'm going to start doing this, going this way. That's not, it's more than a behavior change. It's actually a thinking change. I need to think that I do trust Him, and I believe Him to deliver me through whatever I'm going through. So I have to believe Him. And then it says here that we have to uh, realize that He is done all these things for us. So he suffered and he died and he, his blood was shed for us. So we have to go back sometimes to that, that, that simple believing, that simple thing again. Just like when we first believed in the beginning, faith begins to change in, up in us and we begin to change our thinking and we protect ourselves because we understand the salvation that we have, the hope of our salvation.
We have salvation when we first believe, but we have the hope when He comes back, it will be fulfilled. Amen? So we have the hope. <coughs> I want to encourage you with this. We're going to struggle, but we have victory because of Jesus. Amen? We have victory because of Jesus, because He is the light of the world. He's going to expose not only the things uh, that's darkness in the world, so it's like keep away from those things, but He's also going to expose the darkness and the things that are in our heart and in our mind. And then what we have to do is just confess those. Amen? Is God still working on you? Is He still working on you? Is He still trying to conform you to His image? Is He still doing those things? He is. He's continually, by His Holy Spirit, drawing you to, into a deeper relationship with Jesus. He wants you to walk alongside Him and, and, and be encouraged that He's there to help you through the stuff. Are, are we going to... Um, oh, and we'll get into that. Okay. Anyway, let's go to the next one. Ephesians, <laughs> in the book of Ephesians...
Christian yet. Uh, but I'll talk with him, and he'll tell me all his war stories. He'll tell me all the stuff he's done and all the things like that. And I don't go, oh, my God. But you know what he also does? He also confesses to me, like, he shouldn't be doing those things. I don't have to say anything. He just says it. I think it's amazing, right? God uh, will do that if you just be loving and caring like Jesus was. Amen? And, he, and you're, light to, you're light to darkness, and you don't have to partake of the deeds of evil to win them over. You just have to be there. Amen? You be there. You love on them. Why do you care about me, you know? Why do you, why do you, why do you um, are so loving, caring, whatever. Whatever you need to do, just do as the Holy Spirit leads you to do. Verse 12, for it is, it is a shame even to mention what is dis disobedient, uh, what the disobedient do in secret, but expo uh, ex everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, wake up, O sleeper, rise from the, de from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Christ is going to expose the dark deeds of people. God, and in, so what's so beautiful about the light? The light is not like, who has ever seen a, like a floodlight, you know, those big floodlights, if you ever look into it, it'll just blind you, right? The light of Jesus, this is my heart, I believe this is the light of Jesus. The light of Jesus is not that bright light that goes, oh my God, look at your sin. It's this soft white light, I guess. Can I say it that way? You know, you have a light bulb, you buy the harsh light, the daylight, but you get the soft white light. I think Jesus is like that. He's a, he, it's a soft white he exposes it, and then you have to deal with it, right? It's not like he can, it's not a condemning thing. Because remember I read in John chapter 3, Christ didn't come into the world to condemn the world. He came to expose light, uh, the darkness, he came to expose the sin. He said, here it is. I'm the light of the world. If you come to me, I can take all your sins away. Amazing. I used to be, uh, I, I grew up in a church where we, preached hell, fire, brimstone, you name it. We told people they were going to hell, and it was, I mean, harsh, mean-spirited. I mean, and, and even when we were doing it, I knew that there wasn't, God was dealing with me back then. But I was being mentored by this guy, so I was thinking this is the way, this was normal Christianity. I didn't know that God really just loved everybody. So that's why I like to say God exposes he being the light of the world exposes everything. But I kind of think it's like a, a, a white light, a, a soft white light. That's my words. You can't find it in the Bible. It's my interpretation of the, of the scriptures. It's a, a light that draws people to him. No matter what. Look at the, the story right before we started. Let's go, let's, I'm going to end with this story. Let's go back to um, John um, chapter 8. Thank you, Lord, for that. This is so good. So, John chapter 8, right before um, Jesus said that I am the light of the world, in verse 8, uh, the first part. Um, so, the Pharisees, the teachers, verse, uh, verse 1 8, it says, But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At, at dawn and appeared again in the temple court. So he went to, to pray. That's when he went to Mount of Jesus went to pray. Then he went to the temple court where all the people were gathered around him. And he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone this woman. A stone, uh, such, such woman. How... Uh, now, what do you say? Awesome. Look at the God's heart here. Listen to this. They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus, look at Jesus. Oh, I just love Jesus. Jesus bent down and started to write <coughs> on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If anyone of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. I mean, the law says that she should be stoned, and also the per other person, they didn't bring the man, they just brought the woman, which is, anyway, we'll get into that. But they brought her, the law says this, Jesus bent down and began, 
I don't know what he, a lot of, a lot of scholars have said of hundreds of different things of what Jesus has been done. But think about this. He's a, a crowd, I mean, he got around him because he was a teacher. He, they've seen people blind healed, they've seen leopards healed, they've seen all these wonderful things happen, and now they're questioning Jesus. And he's in the temple. So, I mean, there's hundreds of people there. It wasn't just a little crowd. And so he bends down. It says he bent down and he began to write something on the ground. Now, I don't know what he wrote. I don't know. Some people say maybe he wrote all their sins down of the people standing around, all the Pharisees. I don't know what he wrote. Maybe he just wrote, uh, I am the light and I'm going to expose your sin right now. I don't know what he wrote, what he said, but he said he wrote something. And then he says this, if any one of you is without sin, and every one of them were guilty, every one of them that were standing here were guilty, and he said, and, and he stopped, he, he stooped down and wrote on the ground again, at this, those who heard, heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus stand, uh, straightened up and asked her, so all this time he's kneeling down, writing something on the ground. Nobody knows what he wrote, and we can only speculate. But from the oldest person, maybe the oldest Pharisee, uh, uh, um, the elders that were there, they began to leave because they realized that they uh, were guilty of sin too. This sin was no different than any other sin as what Jesus was portraying here. And then he says to the woman, uh, where are they? There are no one. Where in one version says, "Where are your accusers?" And uh, no one uh, has condemned you. No, sir, she said. And then uh, neither do I condemn you. And then she says, "And this is my version says, go now and leave your life of sin." And another version might say, "Go and sin no more." Whatever lifestyle she's living, obviously Jesus at that moment extended forgiveness to her, and she was clean. And then he says, and the verse next verse is recorded, "I am the light of the world." Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Darkness is exposed as a gentle light. I mean, he could have, by the law, he could have condemned her. They could have stoned her, and it would have been, right, have been the right thing to do according to the law. But there's a better law coming in a new covenant that was forgiveness, and she's totally forgiven. God can forgive you of anything. Amen. And think about it. God can forgive you of anything, but God can forgive anybody of anything. Because God is forgiveness. The light is exposed, and then now what are you doing? It says in John 3 that people like darkness rather than light. So maybe people stay in their sin. Let's not condemn them. Let's not talk about them. Let's just pray for them. Amen? Praise the Lord. Let's do this right now. Jesus is the light of the world. Even in Revelation, we don't even need a sun or a moon. Jesus is that light that will shine in the, in the new Jerusalem. It's going to be amazing. Glorious. What is God telling you today? What is He saying to you right now? I'm going to challenge you. Um, I'm going to challenge you this morning because I just feel like um, that we all need to re examine ourselves and say, let God's light shine into your life so deep that He'll expose whatever's in there that's not supposed to be. Is that okay? Can we do that? Can we take a minute or two and uh, just. Uh, Right where you're at, just bow your heads. Right where you're at, just get, get you and you and God get alone for a moment. And if there's anything in your life that needs to be that Jesus is exposing in your life right at this moment, just let God take it away and ask Him, please, God, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Forgive me for what I just did. Forgive me for my thoughts. Give me for the, I'm just thinking, I'm going to call out things I feel God's telling me to say, so you guys just deal with it, as God says it. Forgive me for the hatred I have in my heart. Forgive me for the unforgiveness I have towards my loved one. Forgive me for fear, for not being a, a light in this world for you, Father.
struggling, and I just need some prayer today. Would you raise your hand and put it back down? I'll say, yes, that's me. I'm a follower, but I'm, I need some help. Anyone else? Anyone else? One, two, three. Anyone else? I'll pray for you in just a second. Um, maybe you're here today and you say, I've never followed you, so I want to start following him and obeying him. If that's you, would you just raise your hand and put it right back down? Uh, yes, thank you for that hand. Anyone else? Thank you, Jesus. Father, uh, Father I thank you for your presence. <coughs> I thank you for your presence here this morning, Lord. I thank you that uh, you sent Jesus to be the light of the world, to expose darkness and sin. Father, for my brothers and sisters that are struggling right now with fear or unbelief or whatever maybe that, that's in their heart, God, I just pray that you uh, forgive them, Lord, and restore them to that right relationship with you, Lord, and help us to stay connected to the vine when temptation or fear or whatever comes over our lives and, and it's caught drawing us away from you, Father God, I pray that we uh, hurry back to your side, hurry back into the, the light so that uh, we won't get caught up in our sins, and I just thank you for that, Lord. For those that are they raise their hand and said they want to start following you today, Lord God. I pray today would be the new day for them. That they understand how great, how deep, and wide the love that you have for them. And that we'll start obeying and following your commands, Lord. And I just thank you for that, Lord. Father, I pray that you love and you bless everyone that's here today. Father, that the joy of the Lord will be their strength and that peace will come over them that oh, they can't even understand or comprehend. Thank you for that today, Lord. I thank you for your uh, blood that cleanses us, Lord Jesus. I thank you for your body that was broken for our healing. I thank you, Jesus, that you expose anything that is dark for me and that you are the light of the world. And I praise you for that, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's stand up together. Uh, can we sing... Um, <coughs> where's Richard? Can we sing... Uh, the one of the videos, Joy to the World, we just... 